API stands for Application Programming Interface. These sorts of tools are commonly used to programmatically pull data from a third-party resource. This chapter demonstrates how one can begin to leverage these tools in their own workflows. Specifically, we're going to cover how to set up your environment, make your API requests, parse and explore the data, add parameters to your requests if necessary, and finally adding headers to your requests if necessary. First, we're going to need to install a couple of packages. So let's install HTTR and JSON Lite, and then let's attach them using the library functions. So if you don't have them installed already, use the install packages function that we've been using throughout this course. Um, all right, and then next, let's actually make the request. So we're going to make a request to CoinGecko's API and get a list of all the coins that they support. We're going to do that with the get function and then specify the URL and store the resulting data in a variable called res. So let's run that and then let's print out res and see what that looks like. So we see we get some high level response data about the API requests, but not any data that we actually need to start doing an analysis. So let's parse that out a little bit with the from JSON function and the raw to char function. And we're going to use that on res content. And then we're going to store all of that in a variable named data. And then let's see what the names are on this data set. So we've got three pieces of data, or maybe it's columns called ID, symbol, and name. Alternatively, we could loop through all the names and print them out this way. But either way, let's now take a look at what the symbol column looks like in our data set. So we'll do data dollar sign symbol and store that in a variable named symbols. And then let's print it out to see what that looks like. Okay, so that's kind of like some high level steps on how you can make your request and then parse the data and start to play with it a little bit. Um, this data also got returned to us as a data frame, so we can click on it and kind of explore it in our studio too without having to do coding. But that's not always going to be the case. Okay, now if we wanted to add parameters to our API request, so say the API is more than just a static URL and it will accept some some arguments, uh, we could do that by adding this query parameter into our get function. And here we're going to pass in two arguments. Uh, one's called IDs, and we're going to say IDs equal to Bitcoin. And then the second one is versus currencies, and we're going to say USD. And that's going to be inside of a list function. Um, and then we're calling a different endpoint here. So instead of getting a list of coins, we're going to start or we're going to try to get the price of Bitcoin denominated in USD from CoinGecko. So let's go ahead and make that request. Um, we could print out res if we wanted to, but that's not necessary. Let's just go straight ahead to parsing this data set. So now you see the data isn't returned to us in the data frame automatically. It's a list this time. So we can put our skills to the test and do names of data. So we know there is a subcategory called Bitcoin, which we could also see if we just played around here. I'm just going to go directly to the point. We can see there's Bitcoin and then there's USD. So we're going to say price is equal to data dollar sign Bitcoin dollar sign USD. And then let's print out that price. And we see it gives us the price of Bitcoin denominated in USD. Okay, then lastly, the exact same thing, but sometimes you'll need to add headers to your request. You'll just do that by adding this parameter to your get function. Let's run it and we'll get something similar.